we don't normally talk about uh, GA announcements, right? We talk about product product launches, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we did hit one last week with IBM uh, Watson X, but it better be good. It better swing you around the room. And I think this was a good one to put in here. So uh, Oracle MySQL Heatwave Lake House, I'm going to say that three times fast. Uh, it was announced in March. And like I said, it's GA today. So what is it? Well, first of all, it's a fully managed service, okay, that is GA on OCI uh, in Azure and AWS later this year. Uh, it is a fully managed lake house for MySQL in query up to half a petabyte. So uh, some definitions for the non-data geeky here. Uh, a data lake house uh, combines the benefit of a data lake and a data warehouse. Just love those engineers and their naming. Now, this one's actually pretty straightforward, right? Uh, a data lake is about storing raw, unprocessed data, multimedia log files, big files. A warehouse is more about structured data, processed data, tends to be texts and numbers. And you slam those together to get the best of both worlds. So. And then you attach that with MySQL that, by the way, is used by uh, all the, you know, web uh, web native companies. I mean, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Netflix, Uber, GitHub, Zendex, Zendesk. And then uh, a lot of the big companies like uh, Bank of America, Citibank, Tesla, Toyota. So very, very popular here. Uh, one of the biggest things here are the benchmarks, right? When you run this on OCI and it, by the way, just a caveat, this service is not as fast on Azure and AWS as it's going to be on OCI because it's not using the same uh, hardware uh, here, har hardware platform. But when you are on OCI, uh, based on at least some of the TPCH benchmarks that uh, Oracle threw out there, you know, we're talking 17 times faster than Snowflake for MySQL, uh, 9x faster than Redshift, 17x faster than Databricks, 36 times, 36 times faster than BigQuery. And listen, I'm a fan of things like BigQuery, and uh, I think Redshift is 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 nice too. When you apply an appliance, uh, an accelerated appliance, and you shove all this stuff into memory, and having super high uh, speed storage, you can't compete on performance. So. I'm not surprised these numbers are, are uh, legitimate. So it's more than performance though, right? It's about automation uh, as well, right? Cause you could put a ton of, ton of DBAs in here to, to be able to support this. But the great part is you don't have to. Uh, it's a, I remember when uh, Larry Ellison got on stage and talked about all the, all the automation and all the challenges and all the mistakes you can make with people. Larry loves people, I think. Uh, but um, getting people, uh, uh, less people to do more work is always a good thing. So when it comes to stuff like system setup, data load, failure handling, query execution, uh, it is auto magic. I also appreciated uh, with GA, right, you expect customers and two customers that were highlighted were uh, Deloitte and Natura. So get it. Get it today on OCI, get it today on Azure, get it on AWS later this year. You know, everybody trying to knock off Oracle and database, right? And they show up with a managed service that's accelerated uh, on their own uh, hardware and available through Azure and AWS credits. Yeah, you it. hit it on the head, Pat. There's a lot of really good things in here. There's some really good collaboration too. It's a tremendous use case for AMD and Epic, and what they've been able to build, uh, yes. the optimization on the silicon, um, the performance against the big names is pretty incredible. I mean, you know, and and that's something that when you talk about a highly specialized accelerated workload. This is a tremendously po powerful use case. I mean, you know, they had one benchmark where they were saying, what, nine times faster than Redshift and 36 times faster than BigQuery. I mean, you're talking about real acceleration and you're talking about, you know, a traditional like object store, right? Um, you know, anywhere from twice as fast as a pure SaaS service like Snowflake to 
nine times faster than Redshift. So you're, you're seeing some really positive benchmarks. And this is what I would say, isolating a specific workload and use case and really nailing it. And this is where Oracle shines. Oracle has hundreds of thousands of customers um, running MySQL that need access to data and need it to be able to be processed very, very quickly. So, you know, you really hit this on the head. It is a GA thing. We did hit this when it was initially announced. I don't think we need to dive, in, you know, too much further into it, Pat. But in the era of AI, the ability to process data is the absolute demarcation between companies that are going to get productivity and outcomes and those that won't. When you're, you know, some of this stuff, when you're a small business and you have a small number of queries, it's like, eh, whatever. But when you're a large global enterprise that your business is running thousands or more concurrent uh, processes, these the time matters, speed matters. And these are these are things that create efficiency. Uh, they can and by the way, cost efficiency, not just not just person, personnel efficiency. So, Pat, this is a really positive announcement. It's going to be interesting to see how the competition uh, addresses this to not allow Oracle, because this is really a, a way that Oracle can kind of wrap itself around its customer base and slow migration. And, and this also has an impact on its growth of, of OCI, which has been really positive in, in recent periods, you know, as customers don't feel as obligatory to take public cloud workloads out of Oracle. Yeah. And that was something that they needed to protect. And this is one of those cases where they're like, run it on our infrastructure and you'll get better results. And by the way, this is their thing, right, Pat, is we're cheaper, you know, and I know cheap is a double entendre, but as they're, they're processing, as the silicon gets better, as the services get better, cheaper is not just cheaper anymore. It can be, it can be better. It can be. So something to look out for. Yeah. One thing I really appreciate is like, how do you compete with the public cloud, right? Well, what you do is you make it available everywhere. You put uh, services together that can cross uh, private and public cloud and, and even some legacy installations. And then you put the rip freaking roaring performance on prem in an appliance. <laughs> My guess is if this gets too successful, you might actually see the appliance sitting in a uh, in a public cloud somewhere at some point. By the way, you can stick this appliance in a colo 